In this video, we'll talk about functions and uh, commutative diagrams, and just diagrams in general, too. But uh, here's the setup. Let's let A, B, and C be sets. And let's say we've got three functions. Let's say F goes from A to B. Let's say G goes from B to C. And then H goes from A all the way over to C. So if you can visualize that in your head in some way, that's pretty cool. But to give everybody a common visualization uh, where to put this stuff, it's typical to represent it in what's called a diagram. And diagram sounds like some kind of vague general term, but we could draw it like this. So uh, you see that my red function f goes from a to b, and my green one h goes from a all the way over to c, and uh, my blue one g goes from b all the way over to c. Now, like the way that these are written right now, if it's just a diagram, there's not assumed to be any relationship between these three functions here, other than just look, here's their domains and their codomains. So it's it's tempting to implicitly assume that there's some kind of like composition uh, equivalence is going on here, uh, but we're not. We're not assuming that in general with the diagram. So in the case though, what if you did have some kind of a composition where what if G composed with F was the same thing as H? So in other words, to try to kind of follow this through here, let me get a different color. If I was to do, you know, this notation here, right? We're gonna start at A, so we'll do F first and then we follow G, that takes me over to C. What is that? That's the same thing as just this function H from, from A to C. So in that case, that's when we say that this particular diagram is what's called commutative, or say that this diagram commutes. So in general with a diagram, you don't have a relationship between the functions that are in the diagram, but if the diagram commutes, then that does assume that there's a relationship between the functions in the diagram. And in particular, um, if you have you know, functions that start in the same place and land in the same place, then uh, those, those functions have to be equal or the composition of those functions has to be equal. So again, in my case, G composed with F is the same thing as H. Uh, one other note about this stuff here, um, let's see. And if, if, if like context clearly implies that we're talking about composition of functions, it's uh, pretty typical to just go ahead and drop the composition symbol altogether. And so you might just see somebody write GF. So if you see that, uh, it's implicitly assumed that you're doing composition with those functions. Okay, so let's look at a little example here. So in my case, the three sets that I have, it's all the same set, it's just the real numbers set. I've been doing that a lot. Just kind of under the, the mindset that, you know, if you're watching this stuff, you've had like college algebra before. So it's something we're all pretty comfortable with. In a lot of books, they talk about like easy sets that have like A, B, and C in them, or like, you know, like lowercase letters, right? Like a set with three elements. But even then they're simple, but it's still just kind of foreign. Like we all come from college algebra and calculus. So again, that's my motivation for why we're doing examples like this. But uh, all right, so here's our diagram here. And so uh, H, is x squared and then g is three times x and the question that i want to ask and that we want to answer together is what function f makes this diagram commute so what does f have to be to make this diagram commute and so what do we want right so i've got a definition of what commute means right if it commutes then that means that's well that composition has to work out and so what would that look like then well let's write out what that composition is G composed with F would be three times F of X, and I want that to be H, and I know that H takes X and squares it. So I want three times F of X to be X, X squared, and so just solve it for F. So F of X has to be the function X squared over three. So we're saying if this function is X squared over three, then that'll make this diagram commute. By the way, there is a symbol that's uh, sometimes um, authors or mathematicians use to indicate that a diagram commutes, and they'll do like a little squiggly arrow inside. So a little rounded arrow, and that usually indicates that the diagram commutes. Cool. Anyway, there's kind of a concrete example where how we check that a diagram commutes or how we find a function that'll make the diagram commute. Okie dokie. So for more general or complicated diagrams to commute, there's just more compositions that you have to check. Check that they hold, check that you get some equalities. So just to give you an example, um, this one is pretty similar to like, we're looking at Mendelssohn's topology book. Um, but uh, I've got one, two, three, four sets, A, B, C, and D, and I've got one, two, three, four, five functions there. If I wanted to say that this diagram commutes, here are some of the things that uh, I need to check. So to say that this commutes, what does that mean? Well, the first thing I notice, F has to be the same thing as J composed with H. So if we follow this, to go from A to B, that ought to be the same thing as if I went this way to go from A to B. So that kind of triangle has to work out. What else do I have to have happen? Well, I've got another triangle over here, and what's it look like? 
D to C, so that's uh, G composed with J, that better be the same thing as K. And so that's the next thing we're gonna write down. And then the last thing that I might notice is it's possible for me to go from A all the way over to C. So something like G composed with F, that better be the same thing as uh, what H com uh, K composed with H, and that better be the same thing as uh, if I did something like, um, you know, H, J, and then G, or if I, H, J, G, or if I did something like uh, H, uh, I guess that's the only one I wanna do. How about, uh, yeah, that's the only one I wanna do. Cool. So those are my two, K, H, G, F, and G, J, H. And when I write these down here, this is where I'm taking um, that idea that's, if we're clearly talking about compositions, it's kind of silly to write the circle in between them all. Um, again, it's taken for granted that of course we mean composition. Where uh, you know we're kind of starting on the right and going to the left. It's like when you see G J H, you know we're really starting where H is, and then we're following it. We do J next, and then we follow with G. So that's that function. So we're saying that should be the same thing as if we did G F, which would just start here, go all the way over, and that should be the same thing as K H, which of course says start with H and then go to K. Go to K. So those are all the three ways that you could go from A to C. The last thing that I want to say about uh, function composition, or, or sorry, about these commutative diagrams and diagrams, uh, they're a pretty important thing in what's called category theory. And category theory is, is a little bit out there, especially if you're like in a proofs class and you're watching this stuff now. But category theory is this cool idea about where these seemingly different, unrelated branch of mathematics can, can kind of all live. And it's kind of a common language for all of them. So if this stuff kind of interests you and you really want to know what some of the big picture is, um, category theory is something to get through this class and work towards. Get through your proofs class or your topology class, whatever you're taking, so you can kind of work towards category theory because that's arguably the next step in your journey to get an idea of what that big picture is.